to Kenworthy Motocross Park. Troy Ohio getting set for the start of number one as far as motos go. That's James Dobb dumping some water on him. There's Jeremy McGrath trying to stay cool under the umbrella. How difficult is it, David, when you've got this mixture of high heat and humidity? It's tough. You know, and the riders that are from back east, a guy like John Dowd, for instance, uh, would probably be a little more used to it. I know I was from being from Virginia. Uh, I'd get to the airport in Atlanta, and a lot of the riders would uh, be, you know, going, man, I can't believe how hot it is here. And I'd always kind of play it up a little bit and go, oh, he should have been here, you know, last week. <laughs> Even hotter. So you do play some mind games out there on the line. And here's Damon Bradshaw, who's just back. And uh, you got to wonder if how his shape is going to be for today. Well, he keeps saying that he gets tired towards the end of the moto, and he's going to get tested today because here's a Supercross-style track, but it's a little bit muddy because it's been raining a little bit on and off, which makes it even tougher. So, Well, there the signboard goes down. Everybody waiting at the line, and you can see the mud right there on the start. The gate drops. Let's see who gets the whole shot. And there they go through the first turn. Jeremy McGrath looked like he was off to a pretty good start, but it was number 78, John Sebastian Roy, who got the whole shot. And look at that. James Dobb going down to the first turn. I couldn't uh. identify the other rider, but uh, Greg Albertine off with a hole shot. Well, Albertine got around. I thought Roy had the hole shot. In fact, he might have been uh, first through the first turn. And there you see uh, him riding in the back. But Albertine off to a great start, one of his better starts of the year. Of course, well, I guess I shouldn't say that. The first moto out of the box at Gainesville. He grabbed the hole shot and led almost the whole way before LaRocco came back to beat him. Well, maybe this is just what he needs to get back up there and ride like he did at Gainesville. And... Uh, he seems to have a pretty good lead right now, and it's always nice to look back and see that you got a privateer right behind you. And right now, his timing looks pretty good. Look at the way he's getting through these whoop sections. And Todd the Hoop is riding along in the third spot, but Albertine, look at that. Oh, man, there's just a, a mess. There's some hard pack out there, too, it looks like, along the course. Well, that's it's what makes it tough. Yeah, you see the mud just over on, off the, uh, the main line. Here, it's pretty dry all the way across, but we're, in those sections where it's muddy, it gets dry in one line. So on the start, if you get 10th or 20th uh, place start, man, you're just stuck there, and there's only one line to take. What happens, though, if you miss the line? You get off that hard pack and hit that mud. Look at Jeremy. Jeremy now makes the move around Roy, and Jeremy is moved into second place. Todd Hoop comes through. And look, Damon Bradshaw also getting a top five start. He's off to a good start. But getting back to my question, you're going from some hard pack into the mud. I mean, you can dump it pretty easily here, can't you? Sure. Well, the, the thing is, is that uh, the hard pack stuff is still a little wet. And it's just like riding on grease. And you see right here, if you miss that berm, you get out into the muddy stuff and you just, it gets clogged up in your foot pegs and in the berms because there's ruts in it. And uh, it's very slick. So you, you, you got to stay in the main rut. And the main thing is, is uh, the, the first lap or two, it's always a, an adjustment because they haven't seen the racetrack for a little while since practice in the morning and things have changed quite a bit. We see Jeremy coming on very strong. That jump, he uh, jumped a little bit farther than Albertine did. He's closing in the gap. McGrath, five moto victories out of 12 on the season so far. Been extremely impressive. He holds a 13-point lead over Jeff Emig. And Emig, we haven't seen him. He must have gotten off to a terrible start. Well, that's, that's good news for McGrath because right now he's poised and ready to take a take on Greg Albertine and I'm, I'm glad to see Bradshaw up there that's the kind of start he needs and uh, you know he has he's been falling down in the first corner and having some problems and and uh, I'd sure like to get him up there but there you see some of that one line uh, situation all the way down this straightaway if they were to go to the right right there it's just soup so it makes it tough to pass in some areas there you get a good look at third place as John Sebastian Roy a privateer and uh, man this young man's got to feel very good right now off to a great start that's got to be good, but uh, Larry Ward, LaRocco right back there, DeHoop, these guys are, they're coming next. So I think for him to just try to be patient and, and just ride calm, not let the whole uh, adrenaline of the, the situation, being up there watching McGrath and, and Albertine do battle, are starting to pull away a little bit from him, which would be expected. But this is a good ride so far for Roy. Well, you look behind him in the fourth spot is Larry Ward, someone we haven't talked a whole lot about here on the outdoor season. Back up front, I'll get back to Larry in a minute, as it looks like we're going to have a battle for the lead. Look at Jeremy McGrath has closed right in on Greg Albertine, and David, with all the airtime you spend here, the uh, similarities to a Supercross track, we expected Jeremy to be the rider to beat, and there he goes trying on the outside, gets a little bite off there and squirts around Albie and into the lead. McGrath is out front.
Well, as they came through that jump, that whoop de doo section there, uh, Albertine came up a little short on the jump. His feet came off the pegs, and I'm sure that interrupted his rhythm. Then he blew the corner and just made it even easier for McGrath to get by. Well, now that McGrath's out front, we'd expect him to start putting a little bit of distance on Albertine. We're in the early stages of Moto Number 1. McGrath is your leader as you get a look at the top 10 on our Suzuki field summary. Find a chase down his teammate Mike LaRocco, and look at DeHoop come along and take that spot away. That was a good move by DeHoop, and, and this inside line has been faster all day into the corner right here if they can get through the corner and still, still clear that double, which he does fine. And Bradshaw uh, is still right in this pack. LaRocco still very close. Emig's right there. and uh, uh -oh. oh, look at that. Mm. Kudrowski dumps the bike coming around there. Bradshaw almost dumped. Oh, and look at the hoop. A header, a flip over. He came over it too close to the tires. And, oh, man, look, he's limping. Remember, he had knee surgery earlier this year. And here's another look at it. Well, we had just come out of uh, off that off-camber corner. Looks like Emmett had gotten around Bradshaw. And then both these guys are going to get around Kudrowski, who apparently just got a little too inside the berm. And the front wheel washed out on that inside lip. But he's up and going pretty quick. And then the hoop. Trying to change the direction of the bike in the air, cut it a little too tight, right into a stack of tires, and that was a, a nice little flip. It didn't look like he got hurt, but he may have just jammed his knee into that stack of tires from the other side we couldn't see, so uh, hopefully that's not too serious. Well, remember, he did have surgery earlier this year. In fact, he missed Mount Morris, worked as a mechanic for his brother, Chad. Now you're getting a good look at Larry Ward as he has gotten around John Sebastian Roy, and this is a battle for third place. And back on, uh, that's uh, Larry Ward there. And we're talking about Larry. He finished second overall in the Supercross. But outdoors, David, he just hasn't had much luck. Uh, 14th at Redbud last time out. Right. Well, you know, he just hasn't had this kind of series that we would have expected. And it's hard to say if... Uh if he used up all his steam in the indoor series and, and uh, now he's just <laughs> can't quite get things together. I know he's had some bike problems and that never helps, but uh, this is a track, like we said, it's kind of a supercross where we expect Larry Ward to do better and he's doing great. He's in third place right now and he's still ahead of LaRocco who just got around Sebastian Roy while we're talking about Larry. Well, Rocco riding along in fourth. Here's your leader, McGrath. And remember before we went to break, I said look for him to put some distance on Alby. Well, he's done exactly that. And now Larry Ward comes back uh, just about two and a half, three seconds behind in third place. And then there's LaRocco. you got to expect LaRocco is going to uh, make a charge in the second half of this first moto. Well, Phil Lawrence, one of the top privateers on the circuit, is having a problem, we're told. Art Ekman uh, has that story. Number 42, Phil Lawrence in the pits right now. As you can see, the clutch lever hanging loose. The bolt fell out as he went down, and he fell on his hand. This is very discouraging as Phil has picked up checks throughout the season as being the top finishing privateer in the 250s. Big disappointing moment for Phil. Well, you can see that again, Art. That's a, that's a heartbreaker there. Well, he's shaking off his hand, too, so I, I can only assume that he maybe hit a fence post, a stack of tires like right there with his hand, or possibly fell and uh, not only broke the lever, but uh, I doubt if he broke his hand, but it didn't look like it felt too good. All right now, LaRocco is catching Larry Ward. This is the battle for third place. Ward's trying to hold him off. We talked about how the season has not gone outdoors for Ward like uh, he would have liked, but look on that move. LaRocco just trying to outpower. Small jump into the right-hander, and LaRocco is right on his tail, and now is the time to put the pressure on him. Well, I think so, but they're into some of the one-line sections. As you can see, there's only one good berm right there, and they come down these straightaways, and uh, there's one good berm right here. LaRocco's going to take a look up through the mud. Well, he gets around Larry Ward. Larry off to a really good run today. Let's check into his pit. Clint, despite the fact that uh, he was just passed by LaRocco here on the straightaway, this is the best performance yet for Larry Ward early. Yeah, we've all been working really hard the last previous races. You know, things haven't gone right, but we've all been working really hard, and he's in good shape, so let's hope we can pull off an overall, a good overall. Well, he's in a better position to finish better than seventh, which is, which is his best finish so far. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. That's our best finish so far, but we're here to make it better again. Curly Ward sits uh, eighth in the points and uh, on the Nolene Sizzler Yamaha. A little further back in the pack, Kudrowski, remember he had fallen 
he is back up and on his way again. Of course, it was just a, a light fall, I guess you could say, but he's battling right now with Damon Bradshaw. Well, remember Bradshaw got by him when he was on the ground, so Kudrowski recouped uh, pretty good and has gotten back around Damon, and he's still right in tow with Jeff Emick, so Kudrowski is obviously running the faster pace of these three riders. Well, this is fifth, sixth, and seventh, and Jeff Emick, after getting off to not exactly a great start, is starting to make a charge as we near the second half of moto number one. McGrath is still your leader as you take a look at the top ten on the Suzuki Field Summary. Been waiting for and the financing. Jeff Emig trying to make his charge now, trying to pick up every position he can here at Kenworthy Motocross Park. And oh, look at that, Greg Albertine. Uh, Loses it, and LaRocco finally finds a way to catch him, get around and move into second place. But Emig has to pick up every position he can, David, just for points. Well, that's good news because these guys just slowed up the pace quite a bit, and that's going to allow Emig to catch up somewhat and, and maybe have a little more inspiration seeing how close he is to him. And, you know, you can see that one-line situation there was Albertine dumped it in that corner. There was no room on the inside for LaRocco to get by. He already, he already drifted too wide. He had to go over the berm and ride through all that mud. So uh, both these guys lost a lot of time right there. Albertine, the three-time world champion, two 250 champions, uh, championships, I should say, for the world in the 125, thrown in there for, for good measure, and look, just dumping it right there. Emig was way back, but he has caught up in a hurry. But I don't think anybody's going to catch this man. Jeremy McGrath, the true red-haired red rider for today. <laughs> well, he's got a big lead right now, and he pairs, he's just cruising. He's not riding a very fast pace at all, and that's the luxury you have when you get out to a good start and ride as aggressive as he does, you know, typically in the beginning of the race. He pulls out to a 15 or 20 second lead and uh, he can afford to ride around and cruise and, and I don't think he has any threat from these guys. I mean, the, the battle these guys are having, as hot as it is, it's got to be very taxing. And for Jeremy right now, he's just conserving energy for the second moto. Right now you see Jeff Emig is caught up to Albertine. He's within striking distance. And look at Albie go to the outside. Emig sweeping around to take over that third spot and pick up a couple of more points. And that's the same exact place Albertine crashed the last before so he's having a lot of problems they're just coming off of that plateau right there it's a little slick when you land if you don't time the landing just right you kind of bounce off the top of that and you can't get into the berm so he's uh he's having a lot of trouble with his timing right there well, right now emig has moved around into third place he'll set his sights on larocco but time is fast running out here at kenworthy motocross park troy ohio a great group of people out here had thunderstorms on saturday and uh, man it has been muddy today, but here's another look at Albie. Now, just into that corner, a little bit too hot. Actually, uh, what Emig does a lot of times, and we couldn't get a shot of it right there, but Emig, uh, on a corner like that, he'll sit down in the air and put his leg out and be ready for that berm, make sure he doesn't overshoot it, and uh, that would have helped Albertine right there. Well, there you see Emig has now caught LaRocco, but catching him is one thing, getting around him is another thing. <laughs> well, it, it's tough in the sections like this right here where it is sort of one line, but... Uh, you know, there's been some passing going on. LaRocco's worked his way up, got around Larry Ward, a few other guys, and, and uh, it's not impossible. So if Emick appears to be riding a little bit faster pace right here, we'll have to see if he can make that move. But this is the situation you've been talking about ever since LaRocco came back and Bradshaw came back. They can play a part in the championship because right now he is separating Emig from Jeremy McGrath. And as we get ready for the final lap, let's see if Emig can get around and look at that. Did LaRocco move over and let him go, you think? No, I don't think so at all. <laughs> I, I think Emig just was determined determined to get around. He rode around that corner, carried more of his speed onto that straightaway and just kind of rode through that deeper mud. And it, it's really tough to tell from this camera angle, but you're riding through that mud, fourth gear wide open, and it's just, it's like a rut. It's coming up and it's almost wanting to drag your feet off the pegs and uh, he made it work. Right now, this man, Jeremy McGrath, making everything work. Listen to the crowd, boy. They're loving it. About 12,000 people are on hand, hand here. Temperature right around 100 degrees. It is miserable. Look at him cheering on Jeremy McGrath, who's on his way. If he doesn't dump it, going to win his sixth moto of the season out of 13. A very impressive record so far. And right about now, he could almost walk it over. There's the checkered flag. McGrath has come away with the victory in moto number one. Jeff Emig is second. Followed by Mike LaRocco in third, Greg Albertine fourth, and Mike Kudrowski 